scratch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe. Let me have it. This is not hot enough. I have to get something really hot water. No, it is scratched. Is it? Well, Never mind, it seems to be impossible to get so to get this organized, huh? <laughs> He's listening to his. What's he doing? He's listening to Garrison Keeler. I guess that's why. He's doing what? He's listening to the Garrison Keeler program. Oh. That is so strange that yesterday I turned your hall light off there. Yeah. And it popped. Oh yeah. Out. I didn't know I, that. Yeah. Today I do it with the. Oh, it's terrible. The bathroom and, and I. He said, I do it. Obviously. You jinxed it. Oh, it's talking about Denmark. Wisconsin with what? A very bad speech defect. <laughs> I'm taping it now. Okay, so we can hear it tomorrow. What? Did, did you see this? Yeah. He said he, it was in the fall of the year that he realized he was not going to live. He's talking about what's fall. Fall means you realize things. Uh -huh. move, move your chair over a little bit. He said that he realized it was in the fall of the year that he realized he was not going to live in Denmark. This was like a revelation. He said because he spoke Danish. Did, huh? And people kept complimenting him on how well he spoke Danish, but they always complimented him in English. Yeah. So <laughs> he realized, he said he only knew two jokes in Danish and two songs. So that was... All right, here we go. I'm just doing this one way. I don't know. I must have scratched this Yeah, you're right. I did scratch it. Yeah, well, over here too. Yeah, more, Forget more, it. More, just a little more. More? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to get it. Okay. Why don't you have your straight instead? Just do as I tell you. Don't do as I do. Do as I tell you. Oh, I see. Now, what is this? Well, I brought a couple of letters that I told I was telling you about. Cookies for me. Cookies for okay. more. Thank you. Yeah? I told you Shirley and her husband were having problems. I knew you were down there, but I had heard it, yeah. Well... He wanted to know what, and here's what. Sorry as usual for I'm not gonna read the whole thing. Can't take the can't take the excuse that I'm too busy working. I quit my job on seven ten ninety due she's got do due to a conflict with one of the office girls. She didn't even graduate from high school. Can't type and has been with us for one year in April and still doesn't know her alphabet. Rick has never given me any authority of being office manager, so no one pays me any attention or respect. I'm just the flunky and the bitch that has to change all the mistakes. Well, it came to an end on 7:10 when Michelle called me, cussed me out, and Rick agreed that no one could put up with me anymore, so I walked out. Ten years, ten months, six days of working unending hours to make my husband a success, and now I'm not needed. He has totally convinced me that no one likes me, and I'm a workaholic and a perfectionist that no one can stand. None of my children call or come to visit me. I thought because they didn't like Rick, but now I can see it must be me also. Haven't seen the boy since Christmas, and Colleen doesn't call unless she wants a babysitter, which I'm not too available to, because I'm working. <laughs> I have, applied, I, work all <laughs> I have applied at several places for a part-time job, doctor's offices, receptionists in town, so forth and so on. And, uh, uh, Which one my brother left her? I also work <laughs> Monday and Tuesday for a total of 13 hours for no pay 
to see if I would like the job and if the vet would like me. He then called Rick to see if it would be okay with him for me to work there. Rick told him he was glad it was him having to make the decision. <laughs> so I'm sure that that blew that. They do a lot of boarding and employ three vets, so I really work myself to death walking dogs and cleaning cages. Plus the, plus the, they have three phone lines that put me right on that Monday morning and so on and so on. So, and then here's the aftermath, and I got this later. Yeah. She's good at writing. Nobody else writes these days. She does. Dearest mother, enjoyed so much talking to you yesterday. You ignore, know, ignore previous letter. <laughs> no, no. You know me so well and I guess I'll never change except for one thing. I'm taking your advice and I'm not going to put myself down anymore. I did call her and tell her. She, she always did that. Uh, I've done the best I could all my life and I'm proud of everything I've accomplished, including my children and fantastic success, Rick and I, and she has underlined, I have gotten from all our long and hard hours put in our business. Mm -hmm. I worked this morning for Dr. McCroskey in town and had a ball, enjoyed it so much, and Rick even called me to see if I was home yet and how I liked the job. Mrs. McCroskey came in the office and gave me a big hug and said she was so glad to have me working for Dr. Don. I've known both of them since I worked for Dr. Bryant long before Rick. I'm keeping your birthday card till next year. She thought my birthday was the wrong date. Change it on the calendar to August 12th. Don't know how I got it mixed up after 35 years of sending you cards. My mind is going. <laughs> Love you and I don't want any back talk about the enclosed check. I earned it this morning doing what I love doing, and I want you to think of me while you are enjoying spending it. Love, Shirley. She sent me twenty-five dollars every very birthday. Nice of She's her. the only one, you know. She sounds very nice. She never forgets. She's she the only I don't send her taking the trouble to write letters. That's really impressive because nobody writes letters no. anymore. Just pick up the telephone. Yeah, I do. So she she likes her new job. Yeah, and. Does she like Rick? Well, so the brother was only that she didn't want to work together anymore then. I bet they were breaking up. This is from Bobby, and I certainly am not going to read all that, but they went to the bar mitzvah. I mean, she wrote a long, long letter on She, time. she, she will not call on the phone. She hates to talk on the phone. She'd rather write a letter. She doesn't like, Very to, talk. Nice. She doesn't like to talk in person either. But anyway, they went to the, the bar mitzvah, and, and Everything was wonderful, and she says Aaron is sweet and loving and appreciative, and Jason is funny. Is this our grandson? Yeah. She said Eric and the boys wore tuxedo. Oh, and now here. I know I can't compete with your professional poetry, but everyone seemed impressed with my little poem, and Aaron hung it right up in his room, which of course made me feel very happy and proud. So here's her poem, and I told you. When I read her, one of mine, or a couple of mine, when she was there, I think it was my first one, she said, oh yeah, that's the kind of poem she writes. And I said, I'm insulted, good and plenty. Because <laughs> here's her But poem. you haven't told her that. No. <laughs> but I will. <laughs> you were sending her the tape, right? She, she wrote this for Aaron's... Uh, How do you spell, spell Aaron? A-A-R-O-N. Oh, Aaron. Not yeah, Aaron. Aaron and Jason. And Jewish here. And, yeah. Uh, Aaron. She, she read Aaron. this at the ceremony. We have a little secret. We might as well confess oh, it. Oh, it's terrible already. <laughs> we are so very proud of you that words cannot express it. From the time you were a baby and turned on all your charms, you stole our hearts completely as we hugged you in our arms. You made the world seem brighter as we finally watched you grow. Each step you took was magic because we loved you so. Your words were so amusing for such a little tyke and how we both applauded when you learned to ride right your bike. <laughs> you little tyke. No, no. I mean, see, I mean, well, that would have been a better rhyme. It would have been unexpected. What? <laughs> what? 
What, what's the first line of that? Your words were so amusing for such a little tyke. We thought they were so wonderful, you little kike. You see? <laughs> kike <laughs> is black or Jewish. You passed you pass through many Jewish. stages. Jewish. You passed through many stages. You have many more to go. We hope that we can stick around to watch them as you, you grow. grow. Yes, I'm May <laughs> your life be filled with laughter and much joy along the way. And most of all, we wish you love your Grammy and PJ. PJ, PJ? is somebody? It must be Joe. Papa Joe. Oh. They call him Papa now Joe. you're laughing. You are. But I find the press because I could never in the world that's Even true. write that. Yes, but, but doesn't that sound like a Hallmark card yeah. kind of poem? Yeah. Yes, I mean. Well, in the very first verse, she says, We have a little secret. We might as well confess it. We are so very proud of you that words cannot express it. Yeah. You don't say it and it. No. Oh, no, I no, see no, the no, rhyme. No, they, that rhyme is fine. Confess it and express it is a perfectly good rhyme. Yeah, but it's two it's. No. That's right. It's no. It should be more variety. No, no, not on that kind of a rhyme. That kind of rhyme is... But Anyhow, the fact that she does write a poem right. and stands up in public and reads it, Things I think, is like, very like, impressive. Like, you little tyke. Now, she I mean, writes... no one calls a child a little tyke anymore. She, but she's not from his generation, and she never made believe she was. I understand. It's a wonderful poem. Now, it's yeah. not a wonderful it's, poem, but it's, it's more much, better than I could do. It's much better than anything Mother has ever done. But don't say anything. <laughs> she, she can't hear because she doesn't ever hear anything. <laughs> but um, she yes. writes terrific essays yeah. and plays really? and things like that. She's very good at stories, but she can't write. For myself, I must be calm. No need to get upset. But even as I said it, my forehead went and felt all wet. That was the first one when, That's uh, very Mildred, good. when Mildred got me interested. Are you interested in more wine? I mean, I, I don't understand poetry, but I like that one. <laughs> what? I write simple poetry. I write for the masses, not for the elite, as I said the other night. Right. Well, see, so see, one reason this is better than Bobby's is that this this four doesn't. It's got some surprises. Uh, no, it's not a, so predictable. I had a darn good notion that it, it goes into the next, yeah, yeah, the next yeah, one. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not the da 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 da. It's unpredictable, so and then it has. I thought that Uber? would be of interest to you. My heart began to flutter and go pity pat. Where's my... Mm. That, that is this is good. Linda's Charles? That's not good. Yes. It's a pictures by Charles. When my... Yes, that's Linda's Charles. Did he, have a, did he have an exhibit at the gallery? He has quite... He has one in... in uh, Iceland. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh, he's a photographer instructor? I never knew that? Yes. And he sells, uh, sells... Written by Elaine Vian, apartment 412, a member of the founding chapter of First World Poets. Is that... Oh what? yeah? What papers? Oh, this is the Bram, Bram Towers News. Yeah. Where in the That's world fine. is my prize winning poem though? <laughs> As of this writing, we only have one person in the hospital. Hmm? As of this writing, we only have one person in the hospital. That's an achievement. Uh, like hooray, it. wonderful work. <laughs> Shouldn't say we only have one, like, they, they would rather have more? Oh. Here. Interesting. Oh, here's the Guess Who contest. Due to the lack of interest in the Guess Who contest, we are not having it this month. <laughs> one person guess do that when I've got coffee up to my <laughs> One person guessed the right person, and we cannot disclose it at this writing until the award is given at the coffee hour on Wednesday. They have a newsletter in the... In the yeah, hours. Ruby does a good job on that. <laughs> Only one person... <laughs> Yeah, the but contest there, the I don't know what it was all about. I wasn't there, but it, this last newsletter said they revived the interest. People <laughs> asked for it. They 
start it again, so I don't know what. But anyway, here's my prize winning one. Yeah. See, 127 entries, second place. That's very good. Where was this? It was at a convention. What is NFSP? National Nursing for Poets Society or something? NFSP, National Florida. National Florida Society for Poets. Frankly, National Florida at the same time. No. Oh, what the heck is it? Northern Florida no. Society for Poetry. FSPA is the Florida Society, the first lobby door, and I don't know what I'm... Well, oh. why don't you read this aloud so yeah. we can hear this? Anyway. And now Elaine Bean will read her prize winning poem. And, and it was judged by keynote speaker Ralph Hammond, and who, here is Ralph Hammond, who was the... Guest speaker, and the subject was poetry, the parlor of language. Ralph Hammond, second vice president of NFSPS. I don't think of what it is. <laughs> and they said he was terrible. Terrible in what sense? He wasn't terrible. Monotonous, monotonous and, oh, as a speaker. Yeah, yeah, as a speaker. But anyway, there was a hundred. But he was obviously good as a judge. It, there was 127 entries, and they narrowed it down to 10 for uh -huh. him to uh -huh. pick the winner. And it had to be on a subject that mentioned 16. It could be anything that said 16, the number 16, oh, okay. whatever. Uh -huh. So here's my prize winning. Yeah. You ready? Ready. I call it the seesaw age, and I think that's what won. I think the title was <laughs> the best part of it. Never know. Japanese lanterns hung from the trees. A phonograph played soft melodies. Our garden glowed in the bright moonlight, for I had become 16 that night. My parents had said I'd have to wait until 16 before I could date. This party was to be my debut. I'd be asked for dates by boys I knew. The evening wore on. I almost cried, for all the boys just stood at one side. While we Wallfire girls hoped for a chance, one of the boys would ask her to dance. At last, the boy who lived right next door, who just yesterday seemed such a bore, came to my side and, to my surprise, turned into a prince before my eyes. Then boys approached girls with a bound, and couples soon were stepping around, giggling, laughing, whispering in ears. They must have practiced dating for years. At the evening's end, I wasn't sure. Becoming 16 had made me mature. I only wanted to get into bed with my teddy bear close to my head. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Yeah, but it was so funny. That must have been pretty good. Yeah, it was 